Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and today I want to tell you about multiplicative multi-perfect numbers. Or rather, I want to tell you about two, about two types of numbers known as multiplicative perfect numbers and multi-perfect numbers. And the multi-perfect ones are also known as multiply perfect numbers, which would have been even more confusing to write here. And then I want to tell you about this theoretical combination of them that I thought of. And first, a perfect number are numbers that commonly phrased, if you take all of their factors, the numbers that could divide them apart from themselves and add those up, if we add up their factors apart from themselves, we get themselves. However, we could also equivalently phrase that as that we add up all of their factors, including themselves, and we end up with twice themselves exactly. With this way, it also leads us more directly towards the multi-perfect numbers. Because you see a typical perfect number, which we will also cover many more magnificent patterns of in the future. Perfect numbers are really cool, also really mysterious, but I'm not gonna get too sidetracked with the perfect numbers themselves. We're gonna look at sort of a bigger category that I sort of almost like more as a category, the multi-perfect numbers compared to the regular ones because it puts the regular ones at a particular place. The regular perfect numbers are the two multi-perfect numbers. I'm holding up two fingers to be clear. I mean, the number two. The English language is so confusing. It, I don't mean that they are too multi-perfect, like they are more than enough multi-perfect. I mean, the number two multi-perfect because then we can generalize it and say like the number one is one multi-perfect. And it is the only number that is one multi-perfect. And we'll notice at least one more time in this video as well, when one wins in a trivial sense, like it often does. Now, we call these patterns trivial, not as a diss to the number one. The number one is super powerful and important, but trivial meaning that one shows up so many places due to its importance that sometimes it's a lot more neat to look at the parts of the pattern that don't almost automatically include a zero or a one at the beginning. Because imagine how many things could be described by some sorts of sequences, and many sequences start with a zero or one. Turns out our sort of meta sequence here does, because we have a list of different sequences. Each of these contains different numbers that we could list in order as a sequence. I've listed only the first example. Uh, here, the first example would be six. And here we have 120, the long hundred, classic, great number. The long hundred, which also made an appearance in my latest main episode on my other combo class channel. That's one of the best math related videos I've ever made. Next, we get one that showed up on this channel in a short recently, this fella. These are some great numbers. This number I wasn't familiar with in other contexts, but it is five multi-perfect. In fact, the smallest five multi-perfect number. There are more categories known. We know some six multi-perfect numbers. There's a point where we don't know examples, and there are still many open questions. For today, as far as the multiplicative multi-perfect numbers go, first, let's just do the multiplicative perfect numbers, because that already, is not a very discussed concept, but it's very interesting because you might wonder, what does multiplicative perfect number mean? It's one of those concepts that the name sort of tells the story. Normally we were adding all of the factors together and seeing if it was twice the number itself. So maybe we would think multiplicative perfect numbers would be multiplying all of the factors together to see if it's twice itself. But with that way of trying to define it, we would quickly notice when we multiply things together, apart from the trivial case of one, which doesn't change the result of the multiplication, two is the only one that would sort of tie the twice as much in terms of itself contributing that doubling that the twice as much was supposed to be the overall amount of multiplicative increase. And so when we have 
more factors than just the number itself, one, and two, if we have any other factors, then it's guaranteed to multiply to more than twice the number. And so we'd quickly note that the only one where it's exactly twice is the number four. That would be the only case where multiplying the factors together results in twice the number. But that's not exactly what multiplicative perfect numbers are. It's not a very commonly used term, but it does have a definition which isn't quite that, but is close. Last time we had the sum of the factors. So now if we had the product of the factors, and then we wanted to do something more fair to the should be twice the number itself part because we upgraded the sum of the factors to the product that was like going up an operation level. And so why didn't we let this part get to do that? So the actual definition of this not very commonly used term is that the product of the factors is n squared instead of 2n. In many contexts, n squared ends up acting sort of like the next level of 2n. And so product being in many contexts, the next level of sum, not only makes this feel more fair, but makes it work better. It makes us have a family of numbers it applies to as opposed to just the number four. But which numbers does it apply to? Now let's note that the number one does technically fit this. This looks confusing because the way I was drawing the factors was a line down to them, but it's like line, line, line. No, this is one with one as a factor. Now, one technically does work because one squared is one and the product of a single thing is treated as that thing so technically works. But in other cases, if we had a number of that type, we're guaranteed that it has factors of one itself and some other stuff. As far as what that other stuff would be, let's note the crucial fact that factors come in pairs usually. There's an exception, which is that if this is a square number, for example, let's say its square root is there, and if it was a factor, that wouldn't have a separate pair. It would be paired with itself. Like if we look at the factors of 25, we'll see that it has three factors. Note that where I'm putting these won't be precisely to scale. The five should be slid over more there. Things are gonna look multiplicative such that the pairs are more balanced in a multiplicative fashion around the square root of the number as opposed to looking halfway symmetrical. Now here with a number like this, which I accidentally drew sort of halfway symmetrical, we can see it has an odd number of factors and only square numbers have an odd number of factors. And in those cases, we would have one number. This would also be true for square numbers that had other factors. For example, if I had 36, that has a bunch of other factors. However, since it has a square root of six, that particular factor would not have a pair and cause it to have an odd total amount. And also change something important here about taking the product. Because otherwise, if we have a factor here, let's call it A of this number N, being a factor, A means, okay, I could take N, I could divide it by that, and I could get some other whole number result. And that other whole number, I could have divided n by that instead to get this one. So if a is here, we also are gonna have n divided by a here. In fact, you can get sort of all the data about the factors of a number just by scanning up to the square root point, which I'm gonna put dotted because let's for now say, what if it wasn't a square number here? What if the square root was not a factor? Well, we'll notice that these factors multiply perfectly to n, which multiplies with the other n to give us n squared. And this is precisely the type of number that just has these four factors that would be the typical type of multiplicative perfect number without the extra multi in there yet. 
We're only, we've done one multi at a time. That multi, then this multi, we're gonna bring multi multis soon. Now there's actually two families of numbers that could fit this particular trait. One of those would be the cubes of primes. And that's because if I take one of those, such as 27, which is the cube of the prime three, we'll notice I have one, three, nine, and 27. And it does work for this layout, ending up with four factors. But in this case, this factor was also a multiple of that factor. Whereas we also could have the scenario where we're in the family called square free semi primes, which mean numbers that are the product of two distinct different primes. And these square free semi primes, such as we'll do a larger example than six, although it is technically one itself, such as 15 would also fit that layout, having one, three, five in itself in that case, except that in this circumstance, that factor was not a multiple of that one. In that circumstance, it was leading them to be families of numbers with quite different traits. So multiplicative perfect numbers without that yet are sort of a nickname for either being one or being a number with four factors, which also is sort of a nickname for either being one or being a cube of a prime or a square free semi prime. And as far as which of those you consider more the nickname one or more the definition fundamentally one is sort of up to you because a lot of things, in this case, a set of numbers show up in many different parts of math or re other aspects of reality and could be defined in many ways. And it's sort of neat that now I have a new way in my head that you could define the type of number, although it's a sort of arbitrary sounding type of number, numbers with four factors or the number one itself that are the ones that fit the intuitive definition. You would have given multiplicative perfect numbers. But what about this extra multi I put in? We add an extra multi there, and that's because if we can take perfect numbers up to multi-perfect numbers, why can't we take the multiplicative perfect numbers up to multiplicative multi-perfect numbers? Now with these, we had the sum of the divisors being some amount times the number itself, and the amount didn't have to be two. We allowed other amounts. So here, the equivalent way of upgrading this would be instead of saying the sum of the factors, we're saying product of the factors still to be multiplicative, but then instead of saying some amount times that n, it's that n to some amount. So we could have that cubed if we were looking at the three multiplicative multi-perfect numbers in the way I've defined that combination, or we could go further and we really could have some m up there that's some whole number that's a level that we may wonder, do numbers of that sort exist? Ones where the product of the factors equals the number itself to that specific constant we've chosen. And we'll quickly find it's not gonna have as many open questions as these ones. These ones have a lot more open questions and mysteries because if I wanna construct a number on any given level here, it would be pretty easy. Although always remember, Whenever something seems easy and you're still talking about something like factors, there's gonna be some complexities hidden in it because there's many mysteries about things like factors and primes, and that leads to mysteries about things like square free semi primes and so on. But here, what we can note is when we had these four factors, that it multiplied to exactly the square of n, there's n times another n, and we'll note again that if we have more factors, they're gonna come in pairs usually also. And so in that usually circumstance, the amount of factors we have being paired together tells us if I took the number of factors, which was f, 
and divided that by two, that should be the exponent on what power of n our result would be if we multiplied all the factors because n and one is one n times another, times another, and they should all come in pairs. Even in the exception cases where a number was square and had an odd number of factors with one of them not coming paired with something else, this does cover it because the half ends up making that work. For example, if I took that number 25 that maybe I shouldn't have erased and it has factors one, five, and itself, and I multiplied those together, I do get 25 to the power of three halves because it has three factors. And this pretty cool formula was one of the things I wanted to make this bonus video about. It's that the product of the factors of a number is always going to be n to the power of the amount of factors divided by two. Now, as for how that applies to our multiplicative multiperfect numbers, if I do have a number like 25, it was three halves. So unless we allow fractions as our levels, meaning similar to the levels we had here, assuming that we're only looking at when the product of the factors of a number could be the number to some whole number's power, in general, overall, every non-square number, as well as one despite being a square, would be some sort of multiplicative, multiperfect number or another. So there we come to another fun alternate way of defining something. If we ever have some reason to describe this set of non-square whole numbers along with the number one, one way we could do that is saying the multiplicative n multiperfect numbers. Now, on any of these levels, the number one does sneak in in a trivial way. So earlier when I said one was gonna show up again at least once uh, or something like that, I guess one actually shows up an infinite amount of times as a trivial way here, because if we look at the level two, level three, level four, or whatever, a one is going to sneak onto that list at the beginning. And apart from that, each one will describe numbers with a certain amount of factors. And it's always going to describe an even amount of factors, which will be double the level we're on, thus skipping the odd amount of factor numbers, which are precisely the square numbers. So like the multiplicative perfect numbers, my idea for generalizing those into the multiplicative multiperfect numbers doesn't end up leading to a term that you would use very often because it describes sets of numbers that we do have other pretty good ways of describing already. But I do think it's interesting and informative to look at connections like this where you can come up with one definition for something based on some combination of other stuff that you just think might combine nicely, and it turns out that it does describe an equivalent set of numbers to some other definition you already know. And if you like cool types of numbers, make sure you check out my new episode about what I call hyper triangular numbers on my other main combo class channel, which is one of the best videos I've ever created. I'll link that in the top comment and description, along with other things like the Discord, if you want to chat with other viewers and sometimes me. And if you do really like my videos, ways to support them, such as Patreon or YouTube memberships. A lot of thanks to the people who have supported in those ways before. And thank you all for watching. I'll catch you again in the next video soon.